Hey guys, so good to have you with us hey. today. Erin and I are going to have a bit of fun today looking at ancient anomalies. Um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. I I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, I used to love watching like um, um, ancient alien things. And I was always reading like archaeology books and dinosaur books and stuff about rocks and caves. <laughs> I've always been obsessed with rocks and yeah. like crystals and stuff yeah so it's like this is so up my street like I think I've I've heard about most of the stuff we're going to talk about today but um it's so nice to just sort of revisit it and have a look and then kind of open up a channel for communication and hopefully inspire people to a bit of googling and and find out mm -hmm. a bit more about um some of these anomalies they're pretty damn awesome so we're just going to start off as we do um by looking at our word for today. So if you guys don't know the series, we are going through the paranormal dictionary. So we're starting in A and we're going all the way to Z talking about everything and anything in the paranormal dictionary. So thanks once again to Paranormality. They've got a really cool ABC of the paranormal. And today we are talking about ancient anomalies. And these are ancient artifacts which don't just don't appear to fit in with the accepted view of archaeology or history. Uh, for example, in Antelope Spring in Utah, a 500 million year old fossil has been found, which is said to reveal a trilobite crushed by a sandaled foot. Archaeology suggests that man was not walking the earth at this time, let alone wearing sandals, hence the anomaly. So that's um, that's something that I've, I've always really loved um, delving into so what are your thoughts with regards to these sorts of anomalies and i've got a picture of the sandal print now i'm going to put it up on the screen so what are your That's thoughts wild well look i've got two different theories one is time travel two is um ancient aliens because mm. i love the i mean i just me personally i love the idea of ancient aliens like that our parentage is is partially to do with ancient aliens like our evolution is helped along by mm. aliens so that that's i'm like it could be either of those or it could be that just i mean history is really a crapshoot isn't it like yeah. especially yeah. super ancient history like we're just depending on things like this so it could be that everything is wrong yeah well that's the thing you know we we like to believe i'm just putting it in my ear doll so i can take you off the main mm -hmm. speakers um but i you know i believe that as much as archaeology and historical studies and stuff are as thorough as they can make it there's still a lot of room and wiggle room uh where with regards to fact we we don't really know um everything and we like yeah. to think we do but we really don't and that's um, what's so like, fascinating about it it's because yeah. it's it's almost like that's the um the huge unknown is what happened millions of years ago. Yeah, totally. So I've um I've opened up this really cool website um that I'm sure people have already seen. So I'm just gonna add that to our screen now. So I was yeah. having a look at ancient origins, um, and you know, it just it seemed to have everything that was mentioned in the uh uh, ancient and weird anomalies um so i thought it would be nice for us to kind of scroll through that um and just have a little chat about that um the one thing that i just have always loved is the nazca lines in peru have you ever traveled to peru and seen them no yeah me neither um i'd probably just sit there and cry like just put my hand on it and just like <laughs> commune um, i haven't heard of it even yeah, so that what we're seeing here is actually visible from space. Uh, really, really big, um, very, very old. Um, they are located on the Peruvian coastal plain, 400 kilometers south of Lima. Um, they are geoglyphs of Nazca, and they cover an incredible 450 kilometers. Um, I'll try and scroll down and see if there are any more. So there, I don't think they've got any more photos in this. <laughs> oh, they have got a video. So basically, if you Google Nazca lines, N-A-Z-C-A lines, Peru, you get to have a look. You can just scroll down through Google. You'll see so many pictures, um, so many animals and really kind of magical looking 
uh, engravings and they're done in the ground in rock and in earth mm. and they've they're so ancient um but how did they do it if they couldn't see themselves from above the ground how did they get the lines so perfect and the, the yeah. detail so correct that's a mystery isn't it i mean that's that's insane so yeah. there's more than just that one that's picture. Tons. There's like numerous tons and tons. Um, what I can do is let me just. Uh, I mean, what would even thing. like, what would even inspire you to do that? If you can't well, see from thing, above. They, they don't know, you know, why, why was there this? I mean, look at this. Can you see that? Wow. I mean, just oh, hold on. look at that. And they don't, and they so just don't know why, you know, what it was that inspired these. Was it to leave a story behind? Was it to tell people? Look at that one there. I mean, that's, look how much, how much detail. Wow. Um, is that mathematics? Is that star maps? Like what? It reminds me of like crop circles. Yeah. That one. It's just absolutely phenomenal absolutely phenomenal so okay that's obviously not more pictures of an ass <laughs> um but yeah as you can see if you google there's even monkeys they're they're constantly finding oh, new I've ones i've seen that picture with the bird yeah i mean it's it's very very beautiful but also quite sort of mathematical if you think about it um and there you can see some people there um, so wow. you can see the size of the people compared to the size of the Nazca lines. And they've just found a cat, as you can see on the, on the wow. side of the hill, which is really cute. Like, I think that's really beautiful. Um, so, yeah, that's just one ancient anomaly. Um, if you guys are watching now or later, you can comment down below what you think about it. Um, have you ever been to Peru? What do you think these are for? So we're going to go to our next one. Is the lost labyrinth of ancient Egypt. So there is no labyrinth left. There are only detailed descriptions of the labyrinth. Um, and the description says, This I have actually seen, a work beyond words. For if anyone put together the buildings of the Greeks and display of their labors, they would seem lesser in both effort and expense. Um, to this labyrinth even the pyramids are beyond words and each was equal to many and mighty works of the greeks yet the labyrinth surpasses even the pyramids and that was written by herodotus in the fifth century bc um herodotus? apparently herodotus herodotus, herodotus herodotus also herodotus was known to be quite a liar oh really so this, um, <laughs> It was describing a colossal temple, 3,000 rooms full of hieroglyphs and paintings. Um, it was named the Labyrinth by the Greeks after the complex maze of corridors. Um, wow. And so there was, there was numerous people that had seen this uh, building, um, and they were saying that it was phenomenal with regards to sound as well. Sound would carry Whoa. really well through the space. Um, and just a very remarkable design. And they say it's all just under the sand, you know, this it's there, but it's hidden now. Like there's so much we don't know about our history. Wow. And then this one doesn't have the best photos, but it is worth looking into. Um, it's underground cities and networks around the world. So I know, you know, you watch often on TV shows about, you know, cave systems and, uh, communities living in caves and things and um, there are some really beautiful cave temples and temples that have been dug into mountains I'm sure you've seen that um, and a lot of them were done pre uh, fancy equipment and pre yeah. technology like how do they do it so precise where there's not even the no. mark of a chisel like how you know it's like in Petra have you seen the pe the um, those cities in Petra yeah, I think that's oh my God. Well. Yeah, just probably. amazing. Absolutely. Like, I just, I wish that we knew more. I wish there was like a, a way to unlock the history. I know one of the saddest moments in history was when the Library of Alexandria was burnt mm. down. Um, I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, we lost so much knowledge. So, so much knowledge. 
um, and they went into the dark ages and and mm -hmm. everything got burnt and broken that didn't have a bible attached to it sadly um so yeah but i i love the idea of underground cities um i would love to explore uh and go and and do some cave walk really would you go yeah. and explore one that nobody had been in for like thousands of years i think if i was guaranteed a map in and out and like enough lighting to be able to see i'd be fine but i think okay. if i was going into somewhere with narrow tunnels and stuff I would, i'd be like nah it's okay because i get my first thought is yeah well my first thought is like what's down there yeah like, no. who's oh. down there and what if you unlock some sort of like curses or something yes <laughs> thanks hollywood <laughs> <laughs> i'm like scared man the mummy is gonna come get me look but uh yeah and happen. then this one I thought it would be nice to kind of see a short little video. So I have a video mm. lined up there. But this is the sound effects of Malta's Hypogeum Hull Safliani. I think that's what it is. Um, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it's the believed to be the oldest prehistoric underground temple in the world. So it's a subterranean structure that goes quite a fair distance underground. Sort of many, many rooms. But what's fantastic and phenomenal about this uh, this place is the acoustics. If you sit in the one room, it's a specific room where, say, the oracle would sit, even if you whisper, it magnifies your voice by a hundredfold. So you can be heard in the furthest chamber as if you're speaking in the room. So that was how they managed to communicate with all their followers. So people would all be sitting in each room quietly and then the oracle would speak and everybody could hear at the same time as if it was microphone. Oh, talk about yeah. mathematics. Like yeah. that's mathematics. Yeah. So, I mean, let's, let's just enjoy ScoMo there for a sec. He's looking mm. great with this lovely lady hand holding those passports. <laughs> um, I love how they just put a fake ass he just hand. Got it. He just and got his nails. It's the same hand too, isn't it? Yeah. And she's like, I never held a hundred dollars, and he's like, I never held that. Well, his jacket. Like, I just got map. my nails done. <laughs> his jacket's like brown, and his. Oh, let's move on. Australia, <laughs> man, do better. Um, yeah. So what I've got is I've got this video of the um this place, and I thought it might be nice to look at it. I have sped so it up cool. and I've muted it, so we're just gonna watch and have a look because that's really cool. I just love the way they've lit it. Like it must have just been so profound. Like, look at the size of it, babe. Like it's huge. I mean, what? Look at that. And I love the, like, just the, I can't That's think the of the right word. Nature of it, hey. Yeah, like this, the circular nature. Like it's not all like square mm -hmm. rooms. And all designed to transport sound. Like I would love to go through there. Just I'd love to just sing in there. Like I, I was just thinking that. Amazing. Oh wow. I mean, and how amazing it looks now. Like how yeah. amazing would it have looked back then? Yeah. But I mean, just this is the oracle room, the one that's showing now. So that oracle would sit on that mound. And when you sit there, that's where your voice is pushed, but not anywhere else. So if you're sitting somewhere else, your voice doesn't carry. So oh it doesn't matter God. if I'm whispering, it wouldn't, you know, interfere with a message. The oracle will still be heard. Like, that's insane. And I mean, that's it's so not precise. Yeah. Um, but can you imagine even just considering, say, superstitions of the time, um, just sitting in a place and you just hear this otherworldly voice just telling you what the future holds, you know, the oracle sort of prophesying over everyone for the year and sort of setting everyone's intentions. It must have been a profound experience, like especially if you weren't, say, able to get to see the oracle ever, if you couldn't get close enough, like it's this magic moment, like absolutely magical moment. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Like, yeah, it would be magical now. <laughs> it would. I, 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 yeah, I think we've 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 lost out on so much of the magic. I think because I think people have become really cynical and and not really willing to have fun and and play pretend and and go there in our imagination and our magic. You know. Um, well, and also because I I think a lot of you know the the ideas are from the Bible have 
created a fear around magic, created a fear mm-hmm. around things that, um, you know, are, are magical and yeah. exciting and it, it's not, like, revered in the same way. Yeah, exactly. And it's like um, I was saying the other day with um, – so I did face painting at your little one's party and – I don't do the face painting that you see at events. I don't do all the sparkles and unicorns and stuff. I focus on that child and creating whatever magic they need to feel really great in the moment. So sometimes it's a wonky flower, but it's what they want. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's rainbows up their arm, you know, and they they choose the colors and, and then we count the colors. Like they get so into it that when I'm finished painting on them they believe there's something it almost like in, endows them with some power and off they run and they're just on a mission they're like playing harder they're having more fun they're just more in the moment and like unlocking that imagination I think like we've kind of lost out on that a lot um just Absolutely. modern society yeah yeah that little girl that had the Hulk costume and then the green flowers and leaves on her face oh. So, cool. so cute yeah and she was like oh. the hulk and so i was like what do you want so she's like eh, i don't know and then i was like well why don't we just what colors have you got can you find them and then do you love flowers do you want to be strong and I, it was so cute painting her up and off she went she was on a mission she was just feeling no. great it was so cute three is All such right. a magical age yeah, i know it is it's awesome <laughs> so this has been like one of my favorites oh. like forever i've always loved it um it's enduring mystery surrounds the ancient site of puma punku so these i just don't understand i've watched a whole um two hour sort of documentary on them where they even went and did microscope microscopic um you know intel looking into it and they said this is laser precision they've been they've been cut by lasers this is not um, in any way done by a tool there's no way they could get that type of precision um, and this is in Bolivia and um, they I'm trying to see where it says yeah I'm not sure what it's saying here they don't I'm not saying what time they think so the Incas conquered the area in 1470 but they, they then incorporated Puma Punku into their empire and culture. But, I mean, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Insane. Yeah, just the mathematic precision. Um, and they also said that that type of stone is incredibly dense, really hard to work with. So it wouldn't have been a very quick and easy easy thing and if someone had done the work by hand with say a lathe and chisel it could have taken a lifetime one human lifetime to fulfill certain just a few blocks you know so it was Mm. very time consuming and if you look at all of this like that is so detailed just beautiful 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 it does make you wonder too like you know the um the legends of like atlantis and how they had um technologies that have been lost and are just now being rediscovered through science you know you wonder if maybe that was existing on a pretty normal scale back then yeah like maybe they did have lasers well I mean think about batteries um you know for a long time we've thought oh we're modern people and we're the ones who uh came up with batteries we're so all Mm. all knowing and wonderful and then they went and hid and found those batteries in the desert that are thousands and thousands of years old, those um, ceramic ones with the coils inside, and those that would have provided enough power to work very basic machinery. And you think, why would they have designed a battery? For what use and what purpose? And yeah. obviously with the passing of time, only things, very hardy materials remain. Um, so, you know, very fine wired things or very light mechanical things might not have stood the test of time or, or been burnt and destroyed as being evil or magic, you mm. know, bad magic. Uh, you don't know what happens when a country is overtaken by super religious things, you know. Um, history um, is written by the victors. Mm, I tell you. I tell you now. All right. So this absolutely blows my mind like i need to look into this more um this is the megalithic archaeological mystery in laos and they are called the plain jars um they are massive massive stone jars um that are just 
all over the unusual scattering of thousands of megalithic jars across nearly 100 sites deep in the mountains of northern Laos. Um, the jars date from the Iron Age, which was 500 BC to 500 AD, and is made up of 3,000 giant stone jars up to three meters tall. Most are made of sandstone, but there are others carved out of harder granite and limestone. Um, one of the big mysteries of the site is how the massive jars, some weighing up to 10 metric tons, were dragged from the quarry to be placed in groupings 10 kilometers away. So they, they're they saying, how did people move them? So this yeah. over here is a lid for one of the jars. Whoa. Like, what? Why? why? You know, why? Yeah, what were they keeping in these jars? Yeah, exactly. Were they, were they death chambers? Were they a type of... Yeah. Um, you know, tomb of such, or did they store food or water? Or like, I mean, look at the size, like just how did they move them? Seeing the people standing on them kind of really brings home. Um, mm. say one, one explanation might be to catch rainwater. Mm. That uh, during monsoon season, they would have captured water that people could have boiled and used as they traveled through the region. But yeah, yeah no, that's look at that like that's just insane awesome so that's something really worth looking into and then of course the guys on this website um there are a lot of really good um links to youtube videos and stuff that you, you can watch if you want to follow up on it so yeah we've got three more to go so let's keep going because this is really interesting this is another thing that is interesting to me the spheres have you ever read about them mm -mm. so in costa rica there are these giant stone spheres and they just don't know why they're there or how um yeah absolutely insane so wow. i'm just having a look here there's 300 Whoa. spheres and the largest is 16 tons and they are oh, made yeah. of granodiorite a hard igneous stone so why are they there? Wow. Tell us, Scomo, why? <laughs> <laughs> why am I seeing Scomo? What would you need thing? spheres like that for? I mean, like, I guess a ritual, like, or, I mean, decoration? Really occurring? Oh. Did they come out of a, a volcano like that? I don't know. I don't know if that's volcanic rock. I don't know. So I Yeah, igneous is volcanic. Mm. So it's possible it was a massive, massive eruption, um, but such perfect spheres. I mean, those yeah. are colored. I just, I think that's amazing. Absolutely. That is amazing. Yeah. So mysterious. I know. And then here's some more lines. So these are the Sajama lines from Bolivia. So Bolivia seems to have quite a few strange anomalies. Um, and again, there are just these dead straight lines um, that they just don't understand. Um, they're saying that they were etched into the ground over a period of 3,000 years by the indigenous people living near the volcano Sajama. Um, so oh. no one knows why they're there. That's, yeah, like just straight know. lines. Are they are they in like like going out from a circle? Like a yeah, central point? Yeah, they're going out from a central, it looks like from a central spot. And, um, oh, I think it's Mount they, Sajama, like the. Yeah. They yeah. say it covers an area of approximately 22,525 square, square kilometers. And they're perfectly straight lines formed into a web or network. Each line is one to three meters wide. The longest line measures 20 kilometers. Whoa. These lines were made without modern technology, etched into the ground by scraping vegetation to the side and scouring away dark surface material consisting of soil and oxidized rock to leave a light subsurface. So they, they, ScoMo doesn't know, but they don't know why they did this. And do you think it was just to divide up land? Do you think it was tribal? Oh, that's an interesting thought. My first thought is like some sort of service that people have to do, like some sort of like, oh. this is so what like you do as part of certain obligations yeah you know, like maybe it's like a rite of passage it's possibly yeah you have to go in 
this gym and we're all like, what does it mean? Yeah. So the Neolithic guy's like, gains. Oh, <laughs> oh gains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, please, fuck boys. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get me honeys. I did 10K today. <laughs> <laughs> no one does leg day <laughs> in Bolivia. <laughs> they all look like those like Spider-Man figurines with just skinny little ass legs and massive barrels. <laughs> Neolithic Hulk. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. it's interesting. I was reading something recently about how um, apparently there was like a hundred thousand year war between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. I read that as well. Yeah, that and they have no idea why we won. Yeah, they're yeah they're saying maybe just technology, just the humans were able to do more. So I did my um, ancestry, my DNA thing, and I have uh, Neanderthal DNA traits on every single line of my DNA, and so does oh. my girlfriend. Yeah, so we're both not fully human, and I just love that so much. Like that's so it's, cool. It's, it's, you know, you see your DNA, so it looks like a tree, um, and they yeah. show in dark blue where it's neanderthal not human and every single line has between one and three of the blue markers so i friggin love that so they said because of that fact there will actually be physical traits um and behavioral traits that are not human that i will display my partner will display like um, what long, longer arms bigger hands um artistic musical uh so i've got really massive paws like they're huge and i've got really long arms like long strong arms um and then something also about like bone density bigger stronger bones yeah um, i went to weight watchers a couple years ago um and they did that thing where they measure your bone like with a scal scallop scallop thing you i don't know oh caliper caliper scalloper <laughs> scalloper <laughs> Um, an Excalibur um, and they because <laughs> I'm scientific and they yeah they did my bones and they did a, a body scan and my friend who's this big guy he was with me same height as me and they called us in and said we need to show you this we've never seen this before and they said your skeleton is heavier and denser and stronger than his and he's a man like yours shouldn't be as thick and strong and, and you know mask as it is um, and they said, your base weight is going to be a lot heavier because you have this really big skeleton. So there's that oh. whole joke saying, I got big bones, I got big bones. But it is for real. You know, my if, if I go really skinny, I'll weigh 85 kgs. So I, yeah. that's how I'm like heavy, you know. Um, and I can beat guys uh, at the fun fair. There's just always been this joke where I go and I play that game where you hit the hammer. And then yeah. you knock the whole thing up. And I'll be in line with a whole lot of dads and they all got their kids and my kids just start giggling because they know what's coming. And um, all the dads are like scoring 80, 85, 89, 88, and they're like getting a lolly and no leaving. And then I get to the front and I just go 95, 95, 95. <laughs> the top. I just keep hitting the top and then my kids get to choose whatever toys they want. And the guy running it like, could you just go? Like you fuck, you're killing all these men. Can you just leave? <laughs> and I'm like, sorry. <laughs> but it's but just strong, like really strong. Yeah. But, yeah. It would have been funny, yeah, especially when you had like long blonde curly hair and oh, you were baby, super femme. And I had like yeah. makeup on and everything, and I just like walk up like bang, bang, bang. And just my kids are like, <laughs> we'll take everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best ever. Like literally, we were at um wow, Luna Park, and the guy, like all the other kids, had kind of walked off with like a little uh, toy or whatever. And after I had gone, he, he's like, I just need to check something, and he went to go check and see if this thing wasn't working. And he was like, okay, I think I fixed it. And I did it again. I just went bah, right up to the top and hit the bell. And he looks at the, at Luca and he's like, take whatever you want. Like, so Luca just dived head first into the barrel, just grabbed all the <laughs> stuff he can take. And he's like, oh my God, like walks out. Like, <laughs> and all the dads are like, hmm, oh, fuck you. <laughs> emasculated this whole line of men. So freaking good. I love it. That's so yeah, amazing. I know it's like it's one of my favorite stories. I just unfortunately I have this stupid Ellis Danlos syndrome. Like if I that messes Finding up my right cartilage. Oh, succeed. what are you doing? Ah, why what are you playing? Is reach out and grab it. Free ads. Pause. Go away. Anyway, so like I was saying, if I didn't have this silly at Ellis Danlos syndrome with all my cartilage messed up, I used to do like weightlifting and rowing and like I love really physical activity, but now mm. I've got to be careful because I dislocate. So, oh, yeah. Oh, so, this sucks. is um, 
the best will last. Like I have this thing about the Venus figurines. I just, I love them. I've always thought they're so amazing. Um, they believe that they were given to women um, as like almost like a, a prayerful type of thing to help with um, uh, fertility and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, so they're carved out of bone like this one is. Um, I don't know if you've heard about the Venus of Willendorf. Um, they're no. from the Paleolithic period, which is 30,000 BC to 10,000 BC. I mean, that is so old. It's just amazing. The one up the top is called the Venus of Holofels, which is um, from 35,000 years ago from a mammoth tusk. Um, and there are all these feminine figures. Uh, wow. And what I love about them is that they are curvaceous. Like, I yeah. just... I love it, and I'm so tired of seeing their faces, my God. So I wanted to just uh, <laughs> look up the Venus of Willendorf quickly to show you how cute she is. You know when you tap it in. Oh, I've seen this one. Isn't she gorgeous? Like What a babe. Favorite. I just love her. Look at her. And That's you know, amazing. as women, we all feel bad. Like if we don't have these perfect, emaciated little Instagrammable bodies. Um, and I'm so glad more and more and more and more of us are going, fuck it, like we love ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. But this just, I, I adore her little body and her bum and her legs. I just think it's beautiful. And she was the ideal woman. She was yeah. everything girls aspired to be and i just absolutely adore her um yeah so that let me so cool now so we can go back to our full screen selves so yeah it's a lot to think about yeah um, it is See, what do you think i think that there is a lot we don't know and i think that it's important for us to open up our minds and be willing to um accept fun theories without becoming too serious about it or too wrapped up in it um mm. yeah i think there's just a lot we don't realize like the crystal skulls elongated skulls um mm. so many strange findings and stuff and it's so much fun to just run with it and experience it you know without labeling it or oppressing it in yourself mm. yeah it's, it is interesting and it's it's kind of like it's the, the mystery of it that's fun yeah exactly yeah. So I hope that we've given people something to think about, um, something to talk about, and something to Google and have a look at. Um, yeah, if you have any other anomalies that you know of, artifacts and things that just don't fit in with the time, um, it'll be so cool if you want to message those to us or comment down below. You're welcome to do that. Um, and thanks for sticking with us for 32 minutes while we look at anomalies. And <laughs> I hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next week, Friday. So right. have you had a good day, my darling? You too. Was that a question or was that a hope you have? Sorry. <laughs> I said, have you had a nice day? <laughs> have I had? I've been working. Yeah. So it's mixed. It's a mixed bag. <laughs> How about yeah. you? No, you've had a hectic day too. Yeah, I've been studying. So I'm going to get back to that now. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see you next week when we talk about our next topic. So I'm really excited about that. And have a you great too. weekend. You too. Thanks. See you. Thanks, guys. Bye.